I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. A lot of people have been posting about their quadcopter cutting their fingers. No, I'm not going to show you any gruesome pictures of cut up fingers. So I thought it was time to do a video about how not to freaking cut your fingers up, you boneheads. Stay tuned. Ever since I posted my video about how there isn't a failsafe bug in Betaflight, I have been inundated with responses from people telling me about ways that their quadcopter misbehaved and cut their fingers up. And I, I feel bad for every single one of you. Uh, I'm no matter what happened, I'm really sorry your your hand got cut. That you nobody deserves that. Uh, and I'm not even going to address the issue of whether there is or isn't a beta flight bug because you know what? It turns out it doesn't matter. You know whether it's a hardware malfunction, a bug in software or you screwed up the misconfiguration, or gosh, maybe you even just bumped the throttle or the arm switch when you didn't mean to. Whatever the reason, sometimes your quadcopter will behave in an unexpected manner, and I want to show you some techniques that I use to try and reduce the risk of things going bad when things go bad. Uh, and, and it all comes down to this. Treat your quadcopter like a dangerous frickin' machine. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to use the example of guns. If you own guns, don't point the gun at somebody even, oh, well, I don't think it's loaded. Yeah, except it's a terrible example to use guns because freaking morons shoot other people with guns all the time, not on purpose. They do it on purpose, too. That's not what I'm talking about. They accidentally shoot each, quote, negligently shoot each other with guns all the time. So if people can't be trusted to be safe with guns and treat them seriously, I don't know how we could be trusted to treat quadcopters safely, but that's a topic for another video. These are powerful, dangerous machines that can really hurt you, and you need to treat them with some respect. So one of the things that I say is don't plug your battery in until you're ready to fly, right? Mount your battery walk over to the flight line or the takeoff location, plug in, and then set your quadcopter down and step away, right? And that moment where you've just plugged your quadcopter in, that is the critical moment where shit can go wrong and surprise you and hurt you. And so that is, and also the moment where you've landed and you're just about to walk over and pick the quadcopter up, those are both really dangerous, risky moments where if anything goes wrong, you are seriously at risk. And that's when you need to be the most careful. So the technique that I use is that I put the battery on the quadcopter. I know, I feel silly explaining this, but <laughs> obviously some of y'all aren't doing it this way, or, or you would, there would be fewer people cutting it up, getting cut up. So I put the battery on the quadcopter. I do not plug the battery in. And then I take the quadcopter over to where I'm going to fly. Now, for a bottom mount battery like this, there's a nice technique that I like to use where I will put the quadcopter upside down on the ground, uh, and I will just plug it in like so. And you can see that the, the, the prop, I'm not in danger from any of the props. And in fact, at this point, it's really nice with bottom mount batteries because the quad is upside down. If it suddenly spins up, it's not going anywhere. It's pulling itself into the ground. And that's really nice. And then when I, when I at land, right? And hopefully I've, the best case scenario from the perspective of safety is that you land and the quadcopter flips upside down because then you can just walk over and, and unplug it. If I land and the quadcopter is right side up, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to do my best to keep my fingers away from the props. Uh, there is a really critical moment where I'm holding it by the top plate. And if it were to start spinning and vibrating and oscillating, I'd be in trouble. I try and as quickly as possible, maybe I even kick it over with my foot, but flip it over get to holding it in a safer location where I'm out of the way of the props and it's facing upside down so if the props spin up it'll pull itself into the ground and then you can see it's not too hard with a bottom mounted battery to sort of keep yourself out of the props while you unplug this one's a little t a little snug but there you go so that's how I do it with a bottom mounted battery my goal is to minimize the amount of time where I'm holding the quad and the quad is plugged in I want to unplug it as soon as I pick it up and then I want to also minimize the amount of time where I'm holding the quad by the top. And if it spins up, it will be pulling itself towards me. Hold it on the bottom. Uh, another trick that I use is if for some reason I am carrying the quad while it's powered up, I always carry it like this. 
In other words, I hold it by the bottom and I hold it facing away from myself so that if the motors were to spin up for any reason, it would fly away from me and not towards me. Some people carry their quads like this, right? And at that point, if it spins up, well, number one, my hand is in the, in the way of the props. That's no good. But number two, it will fly towards me, and that's not good either. People have, comp people have responded to that by saying, well, you're assuming that all the motors will spin at the same speed. And, and what if you're carrying the prod like this and just the left motors spin up? And then it goes toward, well, you're right. We can't be prepared for every eventuality. And there's always a chance that the quad will just flip the freak out. And that's why you want to unplug it as soon as you pick it up and not carry it when it's plugged in, if at all possible. Now, for a top-mounted battery, the situation is, is similar, but also a little different. For a top-mounted battery, again, I'm going to try and minimize the amount of time that I'm carrying the quad while the battery is plugged in. So I'm going to mount the battery without plugging it in. And then... What I'll usually want to do is set the quad down, hold it down, and while I'm holding it down, plug the battery in. This is actually not how I install the battery on this one. Sorry, I got that backwards. What I like to install the battery on this one is like so. It's got a little bit of a long battery uh, lead. So then, yeah, I would come back here and plug in like so. And I don't know if you can see this because of the way the camera is, but my hands are above the prop line and holding down on the battery so if at the moment that I plug it in for some reason the motor starts spinning up I will be reasonably safe and I can unplug and, and get away and then I'll plug in and then get away move away from it the same thing goes uh, with a top mounted battery as with a bottom mounted battery uh, you want to I, I try, always try to carry the quad by the bottom like this and facing away from myself, so if the motor spin up, it will be pulled away. The disadvantage with a top-mounted battery is that there's not a nice handle. <laughs> the battery makes a nice handle. So you kind of got to get your fingers up here on the bottom plate, and that increases the risk that they're going to get in the prop line. That's, I don't know, I mean, I, I still think that's a better option than carrying it like this, where if at any point it spins up, it's going to be pulling itself towards you. But, you know, everybody can make that judgment for themselves. There's one more trick I want to tell you about, uh, and that is if you have to work on your quad at the field, and for some reason you can't be bothered to take your props off, and you don't have a smoke stopper with you, <laughs> all of those things are the preferred ways of dealing with this. Another thing you can do is you flip the quad over and you set it down, especially if you've got some tall grass. Uh, for those of you who live in the desert, all these things about setting your quad down on the ground maybe aren't sounding so sweet. But if you live somewhere where there's grass, you set the quad down upside down in the grass especially, and then you plug your USB in, and while you're working on it, if the motors start to spin, the grass will bind them up, or at the very best, at the very worst case, it'll be pulling itself down into the ground, and it won't really be able to go anywhere. So that's your workaround if you need to do any kind of field maintenance, and for some reason, you don't want to or can't take the props off. And that is going to bring us to the close of this video. It's short, sweet, and to the point. Uh, quite unlike me, I know. <laughs> the bottom line is that, as I said, quadcopters are dangerous machines and they need to be treated with respect. It is easy to forget that because they usually work correctly and don't do unexpected things and don't hurt you. But when they do hurt you, uh, it's, it's barely bad. So, uh, yeah, keep your freaking fingers out of the props. Think ahead and use the techniques I showed you to try and ensure that if something unexpected happens, you're not in the way. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.